Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for December 31st, 2022, the last day of 2022. It is New Year's Eve. Glad that you are with me today. Today is, as I said, New Year's Eve, Hogmanay, which is Scottish for the last day of the year, Make Up Your Mind Day, National Andrea Day, National Champagne Day, and National Heroes Day, or tomorrow last. Let's go ahead and get started. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Alleluia. Our reading for today is from Matthew chapter 7, starting with verse 1, continuing on with Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, or giving of Torah. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Do not judge, so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye? Do not notice the log in your own eye. Or, how can you say to your neighbor, Let me take the speck out of your eye while the log is in your own eye, you hypocrite? First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Jesus is continuing to talk about, you know, how do we apply this righteousness, this right relationship with God and one another and all creation? How do we apply Torah, teaching, law to our daily lives? And a lot of the things that we've heard before this, we've heard before, right? Well, we've heard this one before too. But we've heard it in other places in Scripture. Now he's really dialing in. And this forgiveness thing is a major one for Matthew. Jesus presents this pretty starkly. He says, do not judge. That's it. Do not judge. There's no equivocations. There's no unless in a certain situation, blah, blah, blah. Do not judge. And he even connects it then to the ability to be judged or forgiven, right? Do not judge so that you may not be judged. Four, with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure that you get. So if you are super judgmental to other people, towards other people, let's let's talk about it just merely from a human standpoint, right? If you are very judgmental of other people, How do you think they're going to respond to you? That's how it works. Later, we're going to hear some more sort of expansion upon this and how does God treat this. But primarily here, we're really just talking about human human beings. How you judge other people will be the way that you are judged. So he gives an example again. It's it's narrative, right? And this one is a purposefully ridiculous hyperbolic story, right? It's a joke. 
He says, why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? It's a ridiculous situation, right? You're trying to get a little teeny bit out of your neighbor's eye and you've literally got just a log sticking out of your own. Well, that's not going to work. Not only do you not have depth perception, but it seems like this really unequal sort of situation. And yet, that's kind of the way that we live a lot. It's so much easier, so, 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 so much easier to see inadequacies in someone else. To look at somebody else and say, well, they they shouldn't have do, done that, whatever it is, right? And the further distance we have from someone, the more sort of, um, I guess, objective, but the more judgmental we can be. In fact, we have been known, perhaps you and I, uh, all of us, have been known to be judgmental against entire groups of people based on very little interaction and hearsay and bias passed down. But when we look at our own actions, we usually have answers, don't we? Why did you do that? Well, yes, sure. I caught off that person in traffic, but I really need to, to get over to the gas station. Yes. I I did snap at my spouse or at my child or whoever or that complete stranger. But I was having a really rough day and I had a headache and this and that, right? We have all the answers for why we do things. It's a lot harder to listen to the answers from other people to give them the benefit of the doubt that we often give ourselves. And so the suggestion here is if we are judging others without listening to what's going on, without having compassion on a situation, without having compassion on uh, the, the all of the things that might have led to that outburst or that event or whatever it was, if we don't expect change and growth from people, well, then those things are not going to be expected of us. We shouldn't be surprised if someone doesn't care about our uh, view of things and the reasons why we might have done something. Some of us are geared in such a way, like we talked about yesterday with anxiety, some of us are geared to really, truly see faults and be judgmental of ourselves. Sometimes we are in a position where we know very clearly everything we do wrong. And so our inner monologue is just a, a list of all of the things that we've done wrong. And why couldn't you do better? Sometimes we just let that out. We give people just a piece of the inner critique that we have constantly. Sometimes, in fact, we give others more benefit of the doubt than we give ourselves. It's not really something that Jesus directly addresses, but I think it's part of this. The good news is about grace. Forgiveness liberation, 
redemption. The Hebrew scriptures are full of stories of deeply, deeply, deeply flawed people that God chooses to do God's work in the world. To represent God in the world. To share the love of God in the world. And they mess up all the time. So why should we expect the same, uh, something different from ourselves and others? We are human. We are not going to be perfect. Now, perfection, Jesus earlier said, right? Be perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. The, the, the goal, the mission, the, the, the thing to work for and strive for is perfection. Yeah but also knowing that we won't get there and others won't get there either. And if we really sit back and think about it, how do you think, what, what's going to be more motivating for someone who is having a hard time? If you get on their case and tell them how bad they're doing, or if you love them and say, you know what, I know you, that didn't work out the way that you were hoping it would. How, how can I help you get better? That's a very different view. Of so how can we extend that grace that frankly we have received to others? How can we really, truly feel that grace for ourselves? How do we live with compassion instead of judgment? How do we work to get to know who someone is and the motivations behind their actions and their inner monologue that may be telling them constantly, you are worthless, you are nothing. How do we get to know how people are wired? and the things that they're trying to do, and the reasons that they might do things that you're not a big fan of. How do we have compassion on one another and, and gird one another on towards perfection? How do we support one another by giving grace and forgiveness and compassion to one another instead of judgment. When, hear, when we hear that grace and compassion instead of judgment for ourselves. Yes, God calls us to a standard. We are supposed to, there are ways that we are supposed to live in righteousness and right relationship with God and right relationship with people and right relationship with all of creation. And yes, God has provided us sort of rules and laws and ways of being teaching to apply that wisdom. But our lives are journeys of discovery of ways to live out that, to be better than we were. We're not sinless, but we sin less than we used to. To keep working. Every time I, I garden and pull up weeds, I'm reminded of this, right? Weeds just keep coming back up. So it's just a process of pulling them out again same way uh, those judgmental tendencies we have or whatever it is as they crop up we we pull them out and so in that we we can come along one another and we can say hey i've pulled this log out of my eye this is the thing that i have struggled with and i'm doing much better 
Maybe that person has a better sight to see that speck in their sibling's eye who's dealing with some of the same things, but you, that person is probably going to come with a lot more compassion than judgment. The focus is to be on ourselves. How can I do better? How can I be better? Where do I need to hear that compassion for myself? And and not focus on those inner monologues that tell me I'm worthless and I'm not. How do I acknowledge the biases sees that I have about certain groups of people and certain individuals. How am I told just before I even think about it, what to expect from people and how do I acknowledge that? And then sort of put it to the side and say, I'm not going to live my life based on that. I'm going to base it on what I actually see what I learn about others. All of this is hard. All of this is a journey as we seek to understand one another better. As we seek to be perfect as our God in heaven is perfect. The way we judge is the way that we will be judged. And if that's not humbling, I don't know what else is. So where do you need to work on this? Let us join together in prayer. The Word was made flesh, alleluia, alleluia, and dwelt among us, alleluia, alleluia. Jesus, Son of the living God, splendor of the Father, light eternal, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, King of glory, Son of righteousness, born of the Virgin Mary, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, wonderful Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Lord, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, Prince of Peace, Shepherd of Souls, perfect in holiness, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, friend of all, protector of the poor, treasure of the faithful, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, good shepherd, inexhaustible wisdom, our way, truth, and life, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, joy to the angels and crown of all the saints. Glory to you, O Lord. Christ is born, give him glory. 
Christ has come down from heaven, receive him. Christ is now on earth, exalt him. O earth, sing to the Lord, O ye nations, praise him in joy, for he has been glorified. Lord God, at the end of this solar year, this calendar year, we thank you for the year past as well as the year ahead. We thank you for all the lessons that we have learned. We thank you for the ways that you have come alongside us and you have brought others alongside of us so that we may learn and grow. Send us out into the new year with a renewed hope pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The God of peace be with us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else. Click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition. -ish. Um, and our reading came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram, as well as Substack and Spotify. We'll see you next time and see you next year. Um, service tomorrow will be in person as well as online and um, there will be a guest preacher so join us for that at 10 30 and then more daily prayer on the second all right bye